All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel at the Hunter Collective. Today, we've got Anthony in the chair. Now, we had a little chat on the couch, and first thing was nothing crazy, which is fine. He asked me what my crazy was. Skinhead or my walk, I think that's probably as crazy as we go, I think. But um, what we thought we'd do today is quite a nice, classic men's haircut. So, scissor cut on the back and sides to a reasonably short length. Nothing, again, nothing crazy. Nothing, no scalp exposure, nothing like that. Then we'll do a nice plastic taper to just fade out into nothing, and then we'll trim the sideburns down as well and go fairly short on the sideburns. Just to get like a really nice classic uh, finish to this haircut. Then at the top, just enough length off so that he can brush it over and play around with it. Very low maintenance. So a very classic man's hair, a men's haircut with a very low maintenance finish on the top. So a little bit of product if he wants. He can part it if he wants. He can wear it however. It's a very uniform finish. Not no no part and cut in. Nothing like that at all. Um, so yeah, nice, very nice classic finish for Anthony today. Um, so what we'll do, give it a shampoo and condition, and then we'll start with the cut. I'll show you how to do that. Right guys, so I've just um, shampooed and conditioned Anthony's hair. Now, with the classic scissor cut, I'm still gonna do a horseshoe section, um, just because I like to separate the top to the back and sides. And um, with me doing scissor over comb, I usually start on the back and sides first, build the frame of the sides and the back, and then that way we can just connect it into the top. Again, it keeps the low maintenance element of it quite easy as well. We just work in a very standard, traditional barbering uh, way of doing this as well. So, horseshoe regular, starting from the round of the head and just dropping it down past the, uh, the crown. Anthony's crown smack bang in the center as well, so it works perfectly for whichever way he wants to wear his hair as well, which is good. So it gives it a little bit of an easier, low maintenance finish and you can wear however you want as well. So when doing a scissor cut like this, I tend to leave the hair a little bit wet. Just not soaking wet, just enough that you can see the teeth coming through as you comb it. All right? So just enough that allows me to see the section, allows me to put my scissor in and pick it up nice and evenly. You can do this when you, it's dry, but it's always a bit hard to scissor over comb. It's easy to kind of work we can scissor over the comb if you're refining. It's much easier when it's dry, but when you're doing anything like this, it needs to be a little bit damp, not, but not, not like soaking wet. So, size five comb. This is my cutting comb. It's what I use for any scissor over comb. And a, a longer scissor. So, this is six and a half in scissor. The ones that I do a lot of point cutting with are six or five and a half, generally six. So I always use a, a, longer, a longer scissor for this. It allows me to cover more hair in the comb as well. So as you see, even I've got a pair of sevens and a pair of eights as well. Um, but for this one, I'm gonna use this, this length. Um, I, it just allows me to cut more hair. That's simple, simple as that. No other reason to. If you use like a five, five, five inch scissor or something, you'll be there a lot longer than you will be as well, with, a, with obviously a, a larger scissor. So what we do, you come around this side now. Same idea when you're doing clipper over comb, you're looking at the point of reference where you're gonna start. Only difference with this one is you're working with a scissor. So what you do, slide the comb in. So you find the point of reference where you wanna start. So just about half an inch or so below the horseshoe section. And we're still working to keep this nice square finish in this. So what you do, comb it down, scissor in. So you rest the scissor against the scalp, like that. Comb it down first, always easy to trap the hair. So scissor in. Lift it up so you see the see this section. Work it in the comb. Pick your length you want to do, and cut. Now I always elevate this and work back through the section as well. So I always work up into the section. It's a lot more seamless that way than just doing a standard cut and then working through. I always find it's quite nice to work back into your last section. Just find it creates a bit more of a seamless blend down as well. Scissor in. And again, the same idea as cutting over comb, just getting shorter as you get down to the knee. So I start to angle it now. I start to bring my comb closer in to the nape of the head. 
I'm working back up into it now, starting to taper this in. I'm getting closer and closer to the point where my comb is now touching the nape. And then I, what I'll do is I'll work through this and just make sure every section is flush. There we go. Same again this side. Now what you're looking for now is my guide, which is there. I'm just following the guide from underneath. We can see just coming through the comb and the guide from the right hand side as well. So I've got two guides that I'm following now. Just makes it a lot less, so well, a lot less of a chance to make a mistake if you've got two guides. As you can see, I'm starting to bring the spine of the comb closer to the knee as we work down. And then just cross check. Just bring the comb up. And work that down. Same again. Right there. You can see. Guy's quite obvious. I'm just following that. So this will keep it nice and uniform all the way around. And we're cutting it to a length that you're not going to see scalp exposure suit. If you're looking at a length of a clipper, for example, this will probably be maybe like a, 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 a guard of a six or seven. So that's what we're looking for. But generally, anything over a four, I tend to just use scissors. Just because the guards get so wide, it just leaves quite a lot of hair through. So you end up going over and over and over and over again, whereas you can just do it in one go with a scissor. Now head up slightly as well, so nice and straight now. Again, following the same guide with my guide. I'm just working closer as you go down to the hairline. I'm just starting to angle it over this way, just following the way it curves around his ear. And just trying to follow the hairline as well. There we go. So essentially what I ended up with is longer here and shorter down the bottom. But what you can start to see, Liam, if you go to the side, you start to see this nice square shape happen. So exactly the same thing with a clipper. You leave a more length here to create a nice square shape as it cuts into the neck. So we will taper the neck a little bit tighter, which will really create a really nice curve, a very natural curve as well. Here back, comb under, and just put that through. Now, what works really well with this is by, when you're doing anything scissor over comb, this is probably one of the main reasons why we keep the bottom blade of our scissors still. So as you see, I only move my thumb, and it's just the bottom blade that opens, see? Like that. So, we'll just do that. Now that reason for that is it runs along the spine of the comb. So that way if it's opening out like this, as you'd imagine the cutting angle is going to be shorter to the right hand side, closest to the, the joint of the blade, and then to be on this kind of cutting angle like this. Whereas when you're wearing it flat, just using the bottom blade, it runs perfectly smooth along the bottom and the spine of the comb. Do you see it in action? It works in one perfectly straight line. Now, when you're doing anything like this, don't worry about trying to get everything perfectly over the ear. You're going to use the minis, the mini clippers, to taper in round there. So just doesn't really matter if it's not as short, because you will be going over with the mini clippers as well. So don't waste time trying to get in perfectly. Unless you're doing everything with your scissor, then that's different. But if you're not, just don't worry about around the edges, because you'll do that with the mini clippers. Again on the sides, just try and remember 
to stay going downwards. Don't try and come on an angle like this, because his hair's growing downwards. If his hair's going this way, I'm just following the way his hair grows. That's why it's always good to do a horseshoe, because by separating the top to the sides and the back, you see exactly on the growth pattern and which way it grows down. As you see, it starts to curve in this way. So following that, Now, come back to the, the centre back here. Now, my guide starts from the left hand side now. So, I'm following this through. So, if you watch this, Liam, you come around my right shoulder. So, I started here. I'm going to start just off the centre. Same idea. There's my guide there. So we're switching guides now. We're doing it from the left and turn to the right. Same principle. You might see more hair coming off. As you get lower down, don't worry, follow the guide and you'll be fine, that's the whole point of our guide. It might have been from his previous haircut, there might have been a bit more length left here for his style he was going for. So don't worry about that, even if they've got loads of length down the bottom, if you know what you're looking for, just follow your guide. Good thing about a guide, and the reasons why we follow them so much and why they're there, is because it's really nice in case you know you get talking to your clients or you have to run and get the door or the phone goes in your shop or something like that, or you or you're seeing, seeing a client out or want to buy a product, whatever the scenario becomes. If you, if you run away and you go, oh no, where was I up to? You start back at where you were, you go, like this, okay, well, there's my guide, there's my guide, there's my guide. Ah, there we go, found my guide again. So it just stops you from getting lost as well. So you can always pick it back up. If you can't see your guide, just don't cut it. Another good, uh, another good tip as well, when you're working anything like this, especially when you're doing anything traditional, like scissor over comb like this, traditional barbering, there's a reason why, if you look at a, uh, you look at certain barbers or you look at certain techniques that we do, I don't know if you, any of you guys notice, I'm sure some of the barbers out there have noticed that, the way I hold my comb is like a sort of letter C. Like this. Now what's that for? Is That's because when I'm working scissor over comb, it allows me to be quick moving the comb up and down. Now, some people hold it like this. What happens there, when you're waking up, you've got to roll it to then go back up, which I just find for speed is like quite awkward. So I was always taught, hold it, rest the, bot rest the, the end of the comb against the inside of your, of your pointer finger, and use the index finger, the middle finger, sorry, to pull it back. So you use your thumb to flick, and your middle finger to pull back round. So you push with your thumb, and then pull back round. Now it takes a bit of practice, but that's essentially what we're doing. We're moving our arm up and down. It's not in the wrist, it's all in the fingers and the arm. All right, it's not really moving your wrist. If you watch it slowly, flick it down, pull it back, flick it down, pull it back, flick it down. Now if I was to do it this way, so I'm doing this, I'm gonna pull it up, I just don't think it's as fluid, right? Now, that's just me personally, that's just my preference. I've just always been taught this way. But I understand the reason I was taught for speed and for, I'd say, to execute it kind of perfectly. I always find that by doing it this way, it just feels correct to me. And it just feels that it works well for me. But some people do it the other way, which is fine. But I always just find when I'm working on scissor over comb, I always find it's easier to hold the comb that way. Thank you. 
Just moving that fringe out of the way. So don't cut it. I mean, I used to. I I relate to one of the mums in the group. There's one mum in the group, and there's a mum that is trying to struggle with a job and a child. It's basically mumming at a basic level. <laughs> and she is. There we go. So I'm going to dry this off before I start my clipper wig. And as you know, I'm not using a brush or anything, I'm just doing this purely just to dry it. I can start to see exactly how the sections have been taken. I can also start to refine it a bit as well. Now, Anthony's hair, te is the texture of Anthony's hair, it's, there's a lot of hair, but it's a fine texture. So it does feel, it can feel a bit fluffy in some ways, um, but it is essentially a fine texture. So I think what we've chosen here by going down to this length and working with the scissor is that it's going to stay quite full. So I think scalp exposure for Anthony might not have been the best choice because it would have been quite a strong kind of blend point if you went like down to like I say a one or a two. I think it would look quite patchy as well because it's got that finer texture here. So I think. Choosing to do it with a scissor and working visually for how short you go is always quite good for this texture here as well. So, working on the mini clippers now. Start to strengthen the hairline. Again, we're not looking for anything crazy here, so I'm just using this purely just to taper and just to strengthen. So I'm not looking to cut into the hairline too much. I just want to strengthen it up a little bit. Now with the sideburn, comb in, flat against the cheek, and angle it outwards. Now this will create a nice graduation into the sideburns. So from the bottom to the top. And then just work clipper over comb to taper that in. Now just to strengthen a little bit. Not looking to, again, try and sharpen the hairline off too much. Or something nice and classic. Now this is what I was saying before, you don't need to worry about going right into the ear because that we're going to use this as a tapering measure to kind of work in and go a little bit closer as we go down. So the same idea as what we do with the neck, comb goes flat against the scalp, which again is essentially creating that kind of angle. Because it's so shallow you can't really tell. Now, I'm not looking to loop this over the ear too much. We're looking to keep it nice and just, just neat is what we're looking for. Ear down, pick it up. Spine the comb against the head. All I'm doing is looking for his hairline of where we can sharpen this off. So you see that sits still quite nice and low to his ear. Now there's two ways you can start to taper in the hairline. You can do it like this, where you angle the comb between your fingers, or you can turn it round and angle it that way. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. Sometimes it works well if you mix it up a little bit, because some areas you can't get in by doing it this way, because you start to angle your body and it'll start to get a little bit awkward. So if it doesn't feel right, it feels awkward, don't do it. That's the rule of thumb that I was always taught. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. So if it feels a bit awkward when you stand in a particular position, change, change the change the technique that you're doing. Find a technique that works for you. So I'm working down from the hairline. And I'm just going to strengthen up the hairline here. Thank you. 
Um, so clean up the neck here, and just not going into a harsh line, just starting to flick out at the bottom as well, start to work on that graduation. Taper, fade, whatever you like to call it. There we go. Now we'll wait on the other side, same idea. And this side needs a little bit more strength than the other side. So I'm probably working a bit more into the hairline on this one, just to strengthen it up. But not a lot, not a lot, no, nothing's going to be stubble. You can see I'm not cutting it too far into the hairline, I'm just exposing this natural line that we're looking to follow and just strengthen. Now I'm going to wear a clipper over comb to create a nice taper into the neck. So angling his head slightly forward, just working from where the occipital bone is here, just working a little bit below that. And the same principle as before with the scissor, getting closer and closer and closer. Now wait to my left just because it's sort of easier for me to do so. I've always done that, no particular reason why. Tilt the head over a little bit so it's easy for you to get into. I'm just working different angles to go against where hair grows. So see I switch my comb around like this. So I'm looking to try and get rid of the hair. So it's growing upwards, so I'm going against it. So I'm just using the corner to shatter that to match it up to the middle. Same the other side. Yeah, but you look like 
Just a second. There we go, it's a nice natural taper. Just giving the hairline very natural, no square lines, no nothing. Just blended it right down. Now, we're going to the top, so I'm switching combs and, and switching scissors. Long comb. I know it's a bit battered, don't comment on it, I know. Me trusty comb this, I can't let this one go though, man. I could buy a new one, but you barbers know there's something special about when you have your own. You've had, you had a comb for 10 years or so, you know. So I'm just wetting this hair down, obviously, so it's easy for me to section. And I'm working it out from the crown. This way, because we're going for something quite low maintenance, I'm looking to work in the way the hair grows from the hair growth pattern of the crown. Should we work this out? You know what we do? Work from the front to the back. We lift it up. Now, I'm going to suggest this to you, Anthony, for lengthwise. I would say low maintenance, blend into the sides and the back as well. I would suggest taking off about that much. Would you like to do less or more? That's fine. Is that all right? Yeah, cool. Because that's probably what, say half an inch off, right? I'm gonna point cut into this. We're not looking for anything to kind of too blunt or anything on this haircut. We want something very not very soft, very natural. Uh, I think soft is the key word really, is that we don't want anything to sort of be too blocky, should we say. So my sections are probably a couple of centimeters, maybe maybe three or four centimeters apart, because obviously we're taking a bit of length off. It's fairly short as it is. So I don't want my sections to be too wide as I want it to not look steppy. I want it to look completely uniform. So when we lift this back up, it's roughly the same length all over, give or take the point cutting. Guys underneath there, following the guide. Fingers straight up in the air, not angling it over or down or anything, just going straight up. And then I'm getting just before the crown and angling it straight up. From the forward. Same thing again this side, bring it up. Now the only thing that will over direct them is the fringe, naturally. By bringing it straight up, as you see, it curves forward. The hairline curves straight forward, so as you pick it up, it will automatically over direct. So I'm just working from the corners, straight back to just before the crown. Same size sections, same guide. Remember, don't worry if a little bit less goes through the guide or whatever, as long as you're following your guide from the left-hand side and previous. There could be long bits, short bits, as long as you follow your guide, you can't go wrong. There we go, and I'll bring it forward from the crown. So I'm just leaving, say, about half an inch from the crown. I don't want to cut that off. And I'll bring this over to one side, pick it up. Now here's where we connect it in. So we work from the recession point, which is this part here where it angles into the temple. We bring that straight out and we connect to our guy from underneath. Now I'm going to cut this uniform because I'm not looking for texture in the blend, I'm just looking for it to connect. But again, my sections are staying nice and thin and I'm using both guides to connect that way. It'll perfectly blend into the sides.
Now as we get to the back here, you can see a little bit more lens coming through, that's where we left it from the crown, and we drop it just below the crown. So we're combing the crown into this, but we're over-directing the crown, so we're not cutting it straight on the crown. So we drop it down below the crown, as you see a lot more length comes through now, but I'm still following my guide. I drop it down, and I drop it down from the crown, right in the center. See, so my fingers are staying nice and straight. I've got a guide there, I've got a guide here. And we comb that out from the crown, nothing sticking up. It's all sitting nice, and as you can see, we're getting a nice blend into the sides, very seamless. Now we will go over that with scissor over comb, but essentially we've done most of the, the leg, that's done most of the leg work for me now. So again, the same thing here. Now I comb it over this way because I bring my fingers in from the left hand side. If I combed it from the right to the left, as I comb it in like this, and I'm trying to get my fingers in, what would happen is it would get very messy because my fingers are cutting through the hair. So I just pull it over to one side just so as I pick it up, it's a nice clean section. So I'm working just from the center. So you'll see me guide here. What I'll do now is I bring it this way. And there's my guide. So and this is like bar classic barber 101. This is a, a staple of every sort of barber shop around the, around, our, around the country, around the world, is this kind of technique. This will get you through any haircut, believe it or not. This, you could travel anywhere in the world with this, just learning the, this, these simple techniques. Just before the crown, I can remember it, his crown's dead center. It's not going to be any more lengthy on either side because it's smack bang in the middle. Now normally if it was on the right hand side, there's a lot of length here, I'd work the section back into level with the crown because there's always a lot more build up there. But because it's dead centre, it's going to be the same as that side. Now bring that down. Now this is when I bring it across to this side. I'm going to wet it a little bit because it's starting to dry. Okay, not soaking it, just making it a bit damp. Now I bring it across to this side because I'm working front to back. So my fingers are coming in this way now. Guide up. Now this way we work from the side. This way we work from the side to connect in. So from the recession point, you bring it back. I've got my guide here, my guide here. And I cut it nice and blunt. Now this is the same idea as before. Fingers nice and straight. Guide to guide. And just work around the head. Dropping it down as we get to the crown. You see a bit more length coming through now as well. There we go. And then we match up in the middle. There's our top done. What we do now is we've got the fringe in. As you see, I'm just waiting to take off a little bit of length. I'm working through here. Again, you want the fringe to have a little bit of a longer element just because the way it dips down. So, but I'm just working and I'm following the shape of the hairline. As I get around this side lane, it will connect there to there. I'll show you on the other side as well. Follow my guide. And as we get to here, guide and guide. There we go. Now, what we'll do, we'll texturize now. So, pick it up from the fringe again, and I'll slide into this forward. What this is doing, it's thinning the hair out, it's breaking it up as well. And just pick it up sporadically, I'm just looking to break this hair up. 
Now why I like this technique is you slide them through the hair, slow motion as you go going right up and through the hair. So it's creating texture from the bottom to the top, so it's graduating up to the top of the length we've just cut. It's breaking it up nicely. Just before the, uh, the crown. Working again. So we're doing texture, thinning out as well. And just adding a little bit of movement through there as well. And now what we'll do as well, we'll just mix it with the razor. Just to break this up a little bit more. And we'll just slide with the razor into this as well. And we'll just slide through. Allow them to wear it over this side. And allow them to wear it over this side as well. And then what we'll do, we'll slide forward into it as well. Just stopping at the fringe. So we've got some slide cutting there. We've got a little bit of breaking it up by sliding through with the scissor. So a couple of different textures working through there. Now to finish off, switch back to my cutting comb and my longer scissor. And this is where we just refine the blend from the top into the sides. So working up, just making sure that's sitting nice. Same to the crown, just to refine the top into the sides. And that's a simple, classic barber and haircut done. So I'll dry it off now, and then we'll style. I'm just gonna dry it forwards as the way it wants to grow. Because again, we're not looking to part it, we're not looking to stand it up. We're just making sure that when he dries his hair in the morning, it falls perfectly the way it should do, as it would do without anything in it. Try the fringe left to right, just for speed drying. What you want to do is, when you've dried it off, if the fringe still looks a little bit heavy, or a little bit thick, finish off when it's dry. Right, so his fringe looks a little bit heavy to me there. So what I'll do, is I'll lean his head back, I'll pick the fringe up, and I'll bring it forward. Now, we're not looking to cut length off, we're looking to break this up now. So as you can see, it's quite full and quite heavy, right? right close your eyes, set for me, Anthony. So from halfway down, Breaking with thin scissor, just cutting into this fringe a little bit. But what I'll do, just sit a lot more broken up. You're working this scissor straight in front. You're not angling it anywhere. And what you get is a nice softer finish on the fringe. So you can wear that down if you want, you can wear it up if you want. It just gives them the option that if his fringe is a bit too heavy, it might look a little bit too blunt when it's sitting down. And we're not looking for anything creative here. So that is the haircut done. So what I'll do, I'll put a little bit of clay in there. Uh, I'll just mix it up a little bit and just wear it just in a, a very natural sort of classic hairstyle as well. Right, so I'm going to finish with a little bit of the Real Gentleman Mac clay literally a pea size amount. I'll work it all the way through my fingers and just apply it all over with my fingers as well. Starting from the crown, into the sides, and then working it through. Now just making sure again, as we're looking for this kind of natural style, make sure you work it all over, especially there's a bit more hair in the sides. Now, he could wear it pushed up and over like that if he wanted to. Or you can wear it a bit more down on his face, more natural. Or you could be quite creative on the weekend 
and wear it a lot more styled. But the beauty of this uniform haircut is it allows them to mix it up without compromising a particular look. So you can wear it like that if you want to as well. So again, with it being uniform and cut into one shape, it just allows him to play around with it and not be kind of honed into one look. So he hasn't got a very big side part, he hasn't got anything coming back, it's just a very natural finish. So like we said, let's just keep it a bit more conservative, run it across, part it in his natural part and a little bit for him like when he came in and just keep everything nice and down. Comb it through a little bit as well. So again, nothing too crazy. Not as formal as it could be, but just a little bit natural. But again, the beauty of doing that haircut is that by doing it just a standard kind of barber 101, it just allows him to wear it any way he wants. How's that for you? Yeah, happy? Awesome, man, thank you very much. So to recap, what I did was, um, we did scissor over comb on the back and sides. Uh, we horseshoe the sec horseshoe section first, just to separate the top the back and sides. Very basic, just dropping it down at the crown, working to the recession point. Found our length that we were going for, which I felt was something that was going to be a bit of length in there, quite a conservative kind of finish, um, but something that isn't going to show any scalp exposure. So again, you can relate that however you want to your own clients. Um, taping it in a little bit tighter towards the ears, um, towards the neck and towards the sideburns just to give it a bit more of a classic finish. No square neck and often, very natural neckline. And then just work through, uniform through the top, point cut it still, but the essential length is still the same all over. Uh, there's no side part or anything cut into it. Then work through a bit of slide cutting as well, just to break the thickness of the hair up a little bit. Again, it wasn't that thick, so I didn't want to overdo it. And then we just had a little bit of the razor, just slide uh, cutting just to kind of break it up. But just don't allow them to wear it whichever way you want. So you see a lot of that nice natural texture sitting through there. But again, very kind of conservative, standard barber and haircut. And he's happy, so I'm happy, which is good. <laughs> Anyone who wants this look, um, again, again, do you know what? I'll be, I'll be completely honest, it's a short back and sides, right? But it's just a scissor cut. So more than asking for like a number three or a number four, number six or whatever, just ask for a scissor cut, short back and sides, and then just a whatever length you want to go on top. That's it. Don't ask for a side part. Don't ask for, don't ask for any particular look. Just say, I just want a short back and sides a little bit off the top. And I'd say most barbers knows what, know what that is.